one would have thought that the uncertainty bug is only felt on equity investment. But the real estate sector is also slowing down construction and apprehensive of new business deals. Although it's one sector that's less influenced by political spending, it's mostly affected by the general economic standing of the country and the people. In the brick and mortar, you know, uh, business, uh, when political, you know, uncertainty happen in any country or in any place, people will want to be skeptical. They want to be sure where their their investment is safe. So because of what is happening in Nigeria, a lot of um, investors will want to, uh, you know, put their investment on hold. Aside from political uncertainty, businesses are having to deal with rising insecurity across the country, owing to rampant headsmen attacks on farmland that have led to hundreds of people being killed and thousands displaced. It's going to depend on two things. One, it's going to depend on the candidates and the extent to which he or she was able to communicate their, their plans before the polls. Um, because what should happen is that, you know, business leaders assess um, those intentions and, you know, to, to be prudent, they build in certain scenarios to account for the possibility of that person winning. Nigeria, Africa's largest economy, will hold presidential and governorship election between February and March next year. But the increasing fragmentation of the leading political parties means no one is certain of what shape the elections will take or what they would throw up. Yemi Silanredo, TVC News. Yes, it's a report that I went out to talk to people about and see what it is really happening. But we'll, let's put this into perspective. But we'll be doing that after the break. I'll be joined uh, by Mokhtar Mohammed and Ayo Akiomi here in the studio. We'll both be talking about how this is really affecting the economy and the implication of it all. We'll take a break. You're watching Business Nigeria. In business Nigeria. Yes, we're talking about the political uncertainty affecting businesses in Nigeria at the moment. And let's put this into perspective. In the studio, I have the head research, FSDH Merchant Bank, Ayo Akiomi. Many thanks for your time, Ayo. Thank you for All the time. Me. And also market analyst, Mokta Mohammed. Thank you, Mokta. Yes, let's start from you, Ayo. In a structured economy, we would have the monetary policies very, very strong, the fiscal policies strong, and also the political policies really strong that they would not be affecting each, each other uh, so badly at any point. But in Nigeria, it seems different. We see many businesses halting decisions just ahead of 2019. And what's the implication of this all? I think it has very far-reaching implication on our economy. Businesses' um, decisions are taken with a view of long term. Because if you are taking, if you are coming to invest either in real economy or in financial market, usually you don't take one month or three months view. You take a longer term view. And the political decisions, which of course influence the economic policies and decisions that are made in the country, affect all those decisions that we have to do. So in an environment whereby you can't really say this is what may likely pay, play out, then business decisions have to wait a little bit and see how the politics evolve to, before they take decision. And I think we begin to see a whole lot of that now in Nigeria um, from both portfolio investors and then the people who are actually investing in the real economy. And what our expectations are just that we think that the political actors in the country will quickly um, understand the implication of the decisions they are making and then quickly do what they need to do to calm the economy and the market and to allow um, businesses decisions that um, investment to flow in freely on hand that buy what um, okay, the just very briefly saying. I know this also happens in the developed economies we see it when uh, President Trump was uh, coming into government we saw some uh, actors also holding on and trying to see what it, the outcome would be like but 
Is it that bad? Well, I think it's more pronounced in developing countries, I mean, like Nigeria, that we have in this place. I mean, you've seen, watched, and read in the newspapers a lot of defections that have taken place in the last few weeks in Nigeria, and even people, politicians, using certain things that are very critical to the development of our economy as a bargaining tool to force um, either party to do what that will promote their own agenda. So, and that's where the issues are. So if you be, do things that will promote the economy, yes, there is always you know, negotiation here and then, politics all over the world, but then the overall interest of the economy should be um, what everybody is after. All right, this uncertainty is mostly felt at the Nigerian stock market. In 2017, we saw that the stock market was the third best performing market. But at what we have now is not so. We see many companies halting decisions on listing. Uh, yes, we know MTN is still likely going to list IHS Towers and all others that we have heard about. What's happening? Um, what we had in Nigerian stock exchange is uh, portfolio investors. And portfolio investors come when the price is right and when they think they've made a lot of um, capital appreciation, they tend to go out of the market. They are not in the market for the long time. And um, that's basically what drives the market at that time. Once they see, and again, uh, what again is affecting even the political situation is coming into play. But you need to look at the hike in interest rate in the United States of America also, which happened to be a stable economy with a good economic system that is devolved so much politics. So they tend to look for safe heavens after making the returns here. So the safe heavens is to go back to their own countries. And even in the UK, they've hiked rate for the first time. So it's giving them more returns, even just doing trading there, just doing treasury bill or putting in their fixed income there. So I think basically that's what is really affecting the market. They're coupled with the political uncertainty, which uh, for me, the political uncertainty is not something new. We've been here before. We've, been, we've seen more volatility in the, in the political circle, circle than what we are seeing now. Now what we are seeing is defection. The other election we saw a, a room like if Nigeria is going to go into anarchy, where one party was saying, look, if we lose the election, we are not going to accept the result. There's going to be mayhem. There's going to be this. But we survived that. So we've been through this road before. I, I just feel that we'll go through it again, uh, ho hopefully, if the political actors try to look at the bigger picture, which is the interest of Nigeria. The challenge we have as a country is that we tend to miss politics into the economy that we take to miss politics into security. But if you look at developed economy, they try to separate politics and they try to separate um, politics from the economy and security from the economy. Because these are the mainstream, the whole reason of having a government in place is to provide security and empowerment. And when it comes to security, you provide it, then you come to empowerment, it has to do with your economic policies. And what here in Africa, what we see is the economic policy that the people have the politicians have for the for the people so the citizen is what they can get now and the citizen themselves also is what they can get from the politician now than what they can hope for the future all right one would have thought that the law of fairness will work here where you know uh, the fair attitude for the citizens will be working more than what the politicians have but yes the imf has forecasted and a growth uh, for 2019, 2.3 percent from 1.9 percent that we have now. I don't know how that's going to work if there is already uncertainty in the system. But first off, let me bring in Efiung Ekop is standing by. Uh, fortunately, the market has been reacting to results, uh, financial results uh, for the health year. So Efiung, hello. What's the market? Uh, what did it close like today? Uh, yeah, me see the market closed so in the uh, flat. Uh, you know, indicator 0.06 percent. It wasn't that uh, bad, but uh, it did not stay in the positive uh, territory as we witnessed in uh, mid trade at 130. I tell you that uh, a lot of things happened in the markets today. First of all, Zenit Bank brought in its uh, half year result and uh, paying interim dividend of 30 cobo per share, and the investors think uh, that's uh, better. Again, we have a corn oil company, its results came in late, and the market has suspended the corn oil because of uh, late submission of uh, results. So that inflation is not yet uh, accepted. So let me turn to 
Charles Fagroka, who is a dealer with Foresight Security, so that we do more discussion. Charles, welcome. Thank you very much. You tell it very well, and uh, we see. Let let's talk about Zenit, uh, you know, bringing results to the yeah. market. Zenit Bank has been one company that uh, investors are highly, you know, attracted to its stuff. And uh, with this 30 cobo in selling dividend, do you think that the company is, um, you know, performing very well? That it's going to reward investors very well? Yeah, of course. Uh, Zenit Bank has shown that it's a leader in its own sector. Over time, the bank has shown to give good returns to its uh, shareholders. And uh, in terms of efficiency and management, We'll give it to Zenit Bank. So paying 30 cobalt in tariff dividend, I think, um, is a welcome development. And I think investors should get more of uh, Zenit Bank so that they can partake. Okay, we should tell investors that this is in tariff dividend. The main one will also come. Because Zenit Bank is one company that pays dividend twice in a given yeah, year. That's correct. Now, let's talk about corn oil that is being suspended on the trading floor for late submission of results to the market. That's a post-listing requirement. Yes. Uh, yeah. So let's talk about um, that. You know, the Nigerian Stock Exchange has what we have just said, post-listing requirement. So if you are in a company that is listed on this exchange, it is expected of you as part of your your activities, part of your performance, you must submit your result as at when due. And um, as at today, the result has not been um, submitted. So that was why okay. the notice of suspension. Okay. Well, let me see. I like that um, you still have some questions to ask me right now on market close. I'm ready for you. All right, Jeff Young, I'll get back to you shortly, but let me talk to the guest in the studio. Yes, Ayo, uh, IMF has forecast a 2.3% growth rate in 2019, and of course, that's going to be driven by improved outlook most times on global oil prices and some other uh, key indicators. But with what we are seeing ahead 2019, do you think this is possible? What, what's your take at FSDH? Okay, thank you very much, Emerson. The forecast growth rate for Nigeria by IMF, 2.3, um, we think it's positive in the sense that it was an improvement over what they released in April. However, we have to put in context of the population growth rate. So if our population is growing at about 3%, given the figure released by the NBS National Bureau of Statistics, and our economy is growing at 2.3, what you now have is negative regrowth rate. So that growth rate is not sufficient to bring about inclusive growth rate, inclusive development in Nigeria. So what the government needs to do is to actually prove them wrong and then implement policy that will actually accelerate the growth to enable the country, the economy, create jobs, investors investment activities taking place to ensure that we bring down unemployment rate that is close to 20 percent at the moment a huge amount of people who are supposed to be working they are out of jobs and we even have very weak pricing power so the growth rate positive but however is still far lower than we are we should be going given our population growth rate all right mokta yes you heard the echo the market closed flats but we've, we saw an improved closing last week because of the, um, the financial results that some companies uh, posted. But for how long do you think we can sustain this? Well, Very uh, briefly. The market is going to respond. It's going to respond on the short term. I don't see anything major happening in the market because any investor that wants to come to this market now must look at the, the long-term uh, picture of the market, especially when we are going into a political year. The result from Zenit was good. Ordinary, that's the result that should impact positively. But we've seen other good results, and it did not impact so positively like we thought. And I don't think this would be any different. There may be a little bit of one or two movement, but I think they're going to be slowed down. So going forward, we need a trigger. The trigger will come. And um, I think the trigger will come after we've seen the primaries of the two political parties. Then again, we'll begin to look at the, the, the personalities involved and what, this, what Nigerians stand to gain from again. them. Then we'll see them. All right, let me get back to you, F. Young. F. Young, you were talking to your guest. Let's wrap it up. Well, interestingly, we have insurance stocks doing very well today. The likes of Hallmark Insurance, Niger Insurance, Equity Assurance, all of them came top on the trading floor. Charles, 
Why insurance, the three of them that are really comfortable, are we looking forward to anything happening there? Has there been improvement? Yes, you will recall that the, they are regulator. They came to the market sometime to reassure the market that um, they are putting strategies in place to ensure that insurance firms are doing very well and most investors are getting to key into this insurance company. However, one most important factor that made us to see the insurance company doing well is results of liquidity. The power value rule that has been implemented gives room for a lot of liquidity in the insurance sector. That's why we are seeing most of them performing well. And I think um, it is good for the insurance industry. Charles, many thanks for this. We don't have uh, much time. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Charles Van Groga is a, a dealer with the Foresight uh, Securities. And that's how we traded today, the first day of the week. Let's see how it will be tomorrow. Back to you, Yamasu. Thank you, Efiong. Um, Efiong told us that the market closed flat at 0.06%. Well, one word each from you guys. One word each because we have to close now. What do you think 2019 holds for Nigeria? That's the word. I expect stability. I expect after our election, Nigeria will remain and the investors will be putting in the economy for that. All right, Mukta? I share this of optimism with you. All right, and I will have to thank you so much for your time. Ayo Akiomi and Mukta Mohammed. We appreciate your time. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you. Well, that's Business Nigeria. Just before I go, crude oil prices have remained mixed in the global market as dealers watch U.S. product stockpiles. At the London market, the Brent crude trades for $73 per barrel, up by 21 cents, and the OPEC basket crude trades for $71, down by 49 cents. Analysts say crude prices may tip upward as U.S. and Iran renew hot words. And that's it. I am Yemisi Lanre Ido. We'll see you tomorrow.